Thank you, Jesus. Why don't we just stand up for a minute? Come on. I know it's winter. Glory be to God. Look at the person on the left. Look at the person on the right. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Say, this is my year. This is my year. To reach greater heights. Height. I'm going to soar. Like an eagle. Like an eagle. Because, I'm an eagle. because I'm an eagle. Look at your neighbor and ask him, are you an eagle? Well, if you're not, you better back up because I'm ready to fly. Come on, give the Lord a clap offering. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated in his holy presence. We ask that the Lord will bless us. The word of God will bring nourishment to our bodies and our souls and our spirit. We ask above all that your name will be glorified and the enemy will be. Come on, that the name of the Lord Jesus will be glorified and the enemy will be. Okay, let's open our Bibles to uh, Matthew chapter 14, beginning from verse 13 to, verses 20, to verse 21. We are going to continue on our series, A Recipe for a Miracle, but the subtitle for this one is, uh, You've Come Too Far. Turn to your neighbor, say, You've Come Too Far. Come on, turn to your neighbor, say, You've Come Too Far. So don't give up. You've come too far to give up. Come on, repeat after me. You've come too far to give up. This is not the time to turn around. Praise God. Okay, I'll be reading from the New American Standard Version of the Bible. Verse 13. Now when Jesus heard about John, he withdrew from there in a boat to a secluded place by himself. And when the people heard of this, they followed him on foot from the cities. When he went ashore, he saw a large crowd and felt compassion for them and healed their sick. Verse 15, when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this place is desolate and the hour is already late. So send the crowds away that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said to them, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, we have here only five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Ordering the people to sit down on the grass, he took the five loaves and two fish. And looking up toward the heaven, he blessed the food. And breaking the loaves, he gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate And were satisfied. They picked up what was left over the broken pieces. Twelve full baskets. Verse 21. There was about 5,000 men who ate. Besides the woman and the children. Praise the living Jesus. Glory be to God. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't. You've come too far. To turn back. Okay, we find ourselves in this scripture. This was after Jesus has heard of the beheading of his cousin John, the baptizer, to a lonely place, uh, uh, the baptizer. So he went away to a lonely place, uh, perhaps to grieve. The people heard of this and they followed him on foot. Glory be to God. I've got news for somebody here today. He is a very present help in time of trouble. Glory be to God. I've got news for somebody here today. He is a very present help in time of trouble. Glory be to God. The Bible says that he went by boat. Glory be to God. But the multitude heard that he went by boat and they began to follow him. Glory be to God. They were not deterred by distance. Glory be to God. The Bible tells us, even in that story, that he healed the sick. These were people who are believing God for a breakthrough. Glory be to God. They went on foot. They were not deterred by distance. They were not deterred by exhaustion. Because for adventure, the journey that the man took by boat could be a long journey. Glory be to God. They were not even deterred by guilt. Glory be to God. Oh, I'm going somewhere in a minute. They were not deterred by guilt. Whatever it takes to see Jesus... Whatever it takes to have the hand of God over my life, I'm going to do it. 
And for you to have a miracle in your life, you got to do what it takes to see Jesus. Glory be to God. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. You got to do what it takes to see Jesus. Zacchaeus, the short guy, wanted to see Jesus because he realized his life, he can't continue to live life the way he's been living. The Bible says there was a crowd. Glory be to God. He wasn't deterred by his, the, the short, the, uh, how short he was. He devised a method that whatever it takes, I'm going to see Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say, you've come too far. I can imagine Zacchaeus being in this place and he's realizing that I wanted to see this Jesus, but I can't get a hold of him. I've got to do something. I've got to be like the people who are on foot uh, looking for Jesus. He climbed up the tree and guess what? He saw Jesus. Glory be to God. Seek him while he may be found. I have news for you. Jesus is not hiding. I have news for you. God is not hiding. I have news for somebody here today. God is interested in turning around your fortune. Glory be to God. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. Seek him while he may be found. Glory be to God. The woman with the issue of blood. Glory be to God. She was looking for Jesus. The Bible tells us that she has been to so many doctors. She has exhausted all her funds. But she knew that if she can touch Jesus. But I want to explain something to us. You know, uh, really she wanted to see Jesus. But she realized that there's so many things in her way. Glory be to God. She was so determined to see Jesus. She felt that, listen, I am losing too much blood. I may not have the energy to push through the crowd. If I can't see Jesus, I must feel his presence. So he felt the presence by saying, if I can touch just the helm of his garment, it's good enough for me. Oh, I wish I had a witness in the house of God. You guys are too quiet for me. Seek him while he may be found. Jesus wants to be found. Jesus wants to be touched. Glory be to God. So the woman with the issue of blood did something else. I mean, I've got to put this this way so succinctly. And, and I, I just love it. You know, the woman with the issue of blood did something. It was called worship. And you may not understand what worship, how he was worshiping her. The Bible says she has gone to all the doctors. She's been everywhere. When it looks like the door was about to open, all of a sudden news comes and the door is shut. Glory be to God. The woman went this way. She went, she heard of a surgeon somewhere else. She went there just when she had a little bit of hope. The door was shut. How many of us have been in that place where you feel that just when I have a little bit of hope, that hope is dashed. I've got news for you. The hope that you need is Christ. The Bible says Christ in you, the hope of glory. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. It may look as though things are not happening right now, but as long as you have Christ, you have everything. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. And so the woman has been everywhere. But then she got to the point where she says, mm, I've been to all the surgeons, all the specialists, but I know there is a balm in Gilead somewhere. I know of the name, the man who has a name that is above all names. His name is Jesus he is the one who is wisdom. He is the one who is deliverance. He is the one who is redemption. She, you know what she did there? She put God in a class of his own. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. When you're worshipping, all you're doing is you're putting God in a class of his own. Meaning all the doctors have tried, but there is a doctor above all doctors. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. And so what happened to, to Jesus was that, man, this woman has put me in a place that nobody else can put me. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. All you have to do is put God in a place where nobody else can put him. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. Are you believing for finances? Then you have to put God in a place where nobody else can be. Because you understand that the bank cannot pr provide for you. But you have the king of kings. The one who had gold coming from a river. The one who had delian coming from a river. Who watered the garden of Eden. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. Turn to your neighbor and say, give God his place. Give God his place. Glory be to God. 
They came sorting for him. They came looking for him. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. You know something? While you're seeking the face of God, sometimes you may go to different doors. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. Oh, when I was preparing this message, I was getting so excited. You know, sometimes when you're looking for God, you end up going into wrong places. Oh, glory be to God. And it's easy for people to judge you. Like, how come you went into wrong places? Well, I've got news for you. Welcome to the club. Because there was a gentleman in the Bible called Isaac. Glory be to God. He was looking for God. Oh, the Philistine said all of a sudden, you know when your breakthrough becomes a snare to you. Oh, I wish I had a witness in the house of God. He had a breakthrough. He sold in that land. Remember in Gera, he sold in that land. And in the same year, he reaped a hundredfold. All of a sudden, the people became, began to say to him that they, he's too powerful. Glory be to God. And they got rid of him. And so he kept on going. He went to this door. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. He went to this door. They fought with him. He kept going. Listen, you may be looking for God. Even as you're looking for God, you go to the wrong door. If the door is shut, that means that's not God in it. So you move to the next place. What am I trying to say to you? You may have made a mistake because the door was shut. It means God is not in it. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. And so the more you keep going, the more you find another door. As you find another door... People fight with you like they fought with Isaac. And they fight with you and all the door just shuts all of a sudden. You, you walk away. I've always wondered, why would Isaac just walk away? Why wouldn't he say that my father gave this land to me? It's my father's well. He walked away because he knows that if God opens a door, no man can shut it. Oh, I wish I had a witness in the house of God. So the fact that the door was shut is because God did not open that door. So I'm going to look for the door that God opened. And as he kept on going, he was seeking the Lord. He was going on foot. He was going on foot, seeking Jesus, until all of a sudden he got to a place. Let me tell you, some of you have to go to closed doors before you get to your Rehoboth. Turn to your neighbor and say, seek the Lord. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, get, put him in his place. Listen, I can imagine Isaac just walking around trying to dig a well and the well keeps getting shut. Glory be to God. I can see him just doing it, just doing it. He said, but God told me that the, God told me that whatsoever I lay my hands on, it will prosper. I shall be the head and not the tail. How come when I dig this well, these people are fighting with me? He needs to understand something. That the name of the Lord is called El Shaddai. The one who is what? More than enough. Whatever he gives you is more than enough. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. You serve a God who is more than enough. Give the Lord a clap offering. Glory be to God. And so, just like the woman of, at the well, uh, the, sorry, the woman of the issue of blood, she worshipped God because she found out there is a doctor who is above all doctors. Ah, uh, let me put it this way. When Mary had an encounter with God, with an angel, Mary, uh, uh, Mary, Mary was told, listen, that uh, you're going to have a baby. And she's wondering, uh, according to her own knowledge, it is impossible for me to have a baby without doing what it needs to have a baby. I'm a virgin. Glory be to God. I'm just keeping it G-rated. Glory be to God. You know, yeah, glory be to God. Ah, uh, I don't have the experience uh, to have a baby. And God says, listen, you want a clue? You know your cousin Elizabeth, the one who has been called barren. I don't know. I want to announce to somebody here today, the one who you have been labeled by your situation. You know what? I want to say something to you. Uh, he says, even the one that has been labeled by her situation is already pregnant. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. What God is trying to say is that I am more than enough. Enough. You may not have a lot, you may not have a little, but less is more when it comes to me. I wish I had a witness in the house. Shout hallelujah, somebody. So, you find that these people were looking for God. Turn to your neighbor and say, I've come too far. Listen, I, I, I'm, I'm not missing the point. I'm going somewhere. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, I've come too far. And so all of a sudden, Jesus is trying to grieve. He's, he's gone on a boat somewhere. Guess who is waiting him on the other side? The people who are seeking for God. And God is looking for somebody who will be waiting on the other side. Every time 
I'm still here. I ain't going nowhere. It's the equivalent of being Jacob wrestling with God. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. Say, God, I'm still here. Yeah, everything else may have gone. I may not have two pennies rubbed to, to rub together, but I'm still here because you are God. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. Come on, give the Lord a clap offering. And so, we come to another stage. These people are here. He's fed them. He's healed them. But the Bible says it was late. Glory be to God. It was evening. And the disciples wanted ah, to solve the situation. To solve the situation. How many of us have been in a situation where you say, God, you need to show up now. Uh, show up now before it gets too late. Show up now before the problem becomes too much. Show up now before, Lord, I lose my mind. Lord, please show up. Do something, God. And so the disciples are saying, uh, Jesus, you know what? Let these people go. Show up now, Jesus. Let's solve this problem. Send them away. Uh, it's late. And Jesus says to them, don't send them away. Don't send them away. When you read the John version of that story, Jesus was telling them to feed them as a trick question. Because in the John version, it says Jesus knew why he was telling them. He knew why he was telling them. Let me tell you something. Sometimes God will ask us questions in life. It's not because he wants you to enlighten him. It's because he wants to bless you. Glory be to God. And so the disciples find themselves in a situation like this. How many of you have been in a situation where, uh, where God needs to show up now before the need gets desperate? How many of you, uh, uh, it looks as though uh, God needs to show up now before the situation gets desperate, but he's nowhere to be found? A place where your patience is exhausted. A place where your murmurings begin to arise. Where you begin to complain within the inside of you. A place where you ask, when, this, when is this misery going to stop? When is this misery going to end? I wish I had a witness in the house of God. A place where it looks like you moved from frying pan to fire. Or like the sons of the prophets in 2 Kings chapter 4. Glory be to God. The sons of the prophets ah, with Elisha in 2 Kings chapter 4. There was a famine in the land. Glory be to God. And then the prophet says to the, his assistant, go and put the pot on and make some stew. Glory be to God. And so the servant goes into the field because there was a famine in the land. There was nothing. And so he just found some kind of shrub somewhere and he took it, glory be to God, and put it in the pot and began to boil. But just as they were beginning to eat, just as they thought there was a breakthrough in sight, glory be to God, they realized there's poison on the inside of it. Glory be to God. So the breakthrough became a breakdown. Glory be to God. And then all of a sudden now, there's nothing to eat. But how many of you know there's a God who is more than enough? All of a sudden, there's a man from Baal something. It's a place in the Bible, glory be to God. Ah, and uh, he came and uh, as usual, every year, he brought an offering to the prophet. Glory be to God, because it was the Feast of Tabernacles. He brought an offering. And when he brought this food to the prophet, the prophet now tells his assistants, cook this food and give it to the men. And the servant says, can this feed a hundred men? And the prophet says, thus says the Lord, it will be more than enough. Listen, I want to tell you whatever you have, it may look little. You serve the God who is more than enough. Your little is more. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. And they fed the whole of them and they had extra. So this isn't the first time this kind of miracle will happen. It happened in the Old Testament. But I'm going somewhere. So when, they, when they're here, they find themselves the, 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 a place where it looks like you've moved from frying pan to fire. Because they've moved from wanting to have a breakthrough now to almost dying of hunger. 
I could imagine the prophets saying to themselves, the sons of the prophets saying to themselves, okay, we've moved from a place where we're almost getting poisoned to a place where we're going to die of hunger. A place where you even begin to say at times, I don't care how spiritual you think you are, but there's always a time where you begin to doubt, is God ever going to show up in my life? Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Is God ever going to show up? A place where you even begin to say at times, what profit is it to trust God? Unbelievers seem to be getting blessed while I am going through the fire. What profit is it to trust this God? But Jesus then turns around, going back to the parable, to the story. He says, don't send them away. Glory be to God. This miracle is not, it wasn't for the people who needed healing. This miracle was for the disciples, the follower of Christ. He wanted to show himself strong. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. It says, he went, so the Bible says, so the Bible says the miracle was not for uh, the disciples. Jesus is saying to them, by way of parable. These people have come too far for me to let them down. They have come too far for me to let them down. Feed them. There's food in the barn. Feed them. They've come too far. They came on foot. Some of them probably swam to get there. Some of them were probably dragged themselves. Some of them probably limped to get there. Glory be to God. But he's saying to them that, listen, they have come from far and within. And some of you have gone too far with God for God to let you down. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. He says, I will provide for them. He says, you have come too far. Turn to your neighbor and say, I've come too far. It's not time for me to be hopeless. Glory be to God. A place where you ask, where is the, when is the misery going to cease? He says, don't send them away. Feed them. Glory be to God. He said, I'll provide. I'll provide for you because you've come too far from where you started. Oh, I wish I had a witness. Your labor of love will always be rewarded because you have come too far. Oh, I wish I had a witness in the house of God. I don't care how long it seems, your labor of love will be rewarded because you have come too far. I guess I have an example. There was a gentleman called Mordecai. Glory be to God. Oh my goodness. Some of us sometimes we've been through so much in life where we, don't, we are so cynical about life itself. Glory be to God. And the Mordecai is there, glory be to God, caught, caught in captivity, become a second-rate citizen in a land, glory be to God. But Mordecai looked like, man, I've been too far with this God. I've come too far with this God that I will be weary in doing good. So the good that I'm doing, I'm going to continue to do. How does he continue to do that good? He sees that there's an attempt upon the life of the king, glory be to God. He says, I'm going to keep doing good. Even though these guys, this was the guy responsible for me leaving my home. This was the guy who kept me in captivity. But there is an attempt on his life. But because of the God that I serve, he is a good God. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. I'm going to continue to go on and do good. This is the time for you not to give up. This is the time for you to continue to do good. Even when disappointment comes. Even when betrayal comes. Listen, God will not owe you. He will reward your labor. I think it was in Isaiah 52 verse 12. He says, he is your re-reward. That means after giving you a reward, he will give you another reward. Oh, glory be to God. Mordecai falls an attempt. He wasn't weary in doing good. And though he was in captivity in Babylon, he followed an attempt on the king's life. He saved the life of those who kept him captive. The Bible says the king could not sleep one day though. Oh, glory be to God. The king could not sleep because God knew Mordecai needs a payday. And I'm announcing to somebody here today, your payday is coming. Oh, glory be to God. The greater the agony, the greater the destiny. Your payday is coming. Turn to your neighbor and say, your payday is coming. 
Oh yes, your payday for your disappointment. Your payday for your betrayal. Your payday for everybody who's rejected you. I say your payday is coming. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. I mean, look, the man Haman looked down on Mordecai. Looked down on him. And because he, dis he was so disgusted by Haman, he decided to wipe out a whole generation. But because Mordecai has come too far, God is not going to look at him just like that. It looked like doom. He's facing doom. It looked like the cause of the doom of a whole generation will be hanging upon his neck. Glory be to God. But the God who is a God who is more than enough. The God who realizes that Mordecai has come too far from where he started. Says, I'm going to reward him. Guess what he does? He decides to take sleep away from the king. Woo, I don't know what you're going through. I know you have had sleepless nights. I know you have been sick with worry. But can I tell you something? The same worry, God is going to turn around into peace. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. The same ones who are putting you down are the same ones who are going to celebrate you. You do realize that Haman began to celebrate the man he was disgusted of. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Turn to your neighbor. Say, I've come too far. Therefore, my payday is coming. Oh, come on, give the Lord a clap offering. He went from a situation of impending doom to a place of perpetual honor. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. I'm here to tell you that there's a bomb in Gilead to heal that wounded soul. God is taking you from impending doom to perpetual bliss. I wonder how Lazarus' sisters felt, glory be to God. They sent for Jesus, glory be to God. When the problem could have been redeemed, glory be to God. The Bible says he was sick. They sent a message to Jesus and they said, Jesus, you know, Lazarus, the brother of that Mary that you love, the one you love. I want to announce to you, I don't care what you're going through, it does not change the love that God has for you. The one that he loves. Glory be to God. I wonder how they felt. Jesus, do this thing right now. While we can handle the situation. Before he gets too messy. Jesus, show up. Some of us are here today and you're wondering, God, please show up before this situation gets too messy. I want you to understand that you've come too far from where you started from. God will not look at you and ignore you. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. Oh, glory be to God. And so, they're waiting. By now, the situation is so messy. The Bible says his body stank. The situation, people can smell it from afar. When you're going up and down, people look at you. They don't even see your face. They see your situation. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And Jesus comes and Martha comes and says, you know what? Uh, uh, this situation is a lot. I mean, I know you are the resurrection and the life. I know you can do stuff. I know you can turn water into wine. I know you can make the, sick, uh, the blind see. But you know, this situation... Is a little messy. But she said one thing. She put Jesus in his place. She says, even now. Turn to your neighbor and say, even now. No matter how messy your situation is. He says, even now. If you, I know if you ask God, he will answer you. Can I tell you something? Even now, you still have an express connection to heaven. It doesn't even matter what you did in the past. It doesn't matter what your mistakes are. Listen, you have a straight express line to Jesus. He says, call upon the Lord of hosts. He will always hear. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. She says, even now. But guess what? Mary did. 
As soon as Mary heard, what did she do? She came. She came and worshipped. Listen, you may not have two pennies to rub together. The situation may be too messy. Glory be to God. You may not see light at the end of the tunnel. But the one thing you can do is worship the king of kings. Because whether the situation is bad or good, he is still Jesus. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forevermore. He is the unchanging changer. Glory be to God. Everything else can change around you, but he stands forever. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. Oh, I'm about to round up. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I remember when I was preparing this. Listen, I, I, let's, listen, there's no situation that you're going through that is too worse. I'm telling you, if God can make somebody who has a criminal record become a prime minister, somebody who has a criminal record, uh, do you know that person? His name is Joseph. He has a criminal record. Did he go to jail or not? Do you think when people go to jail, they come out with a criminal record? Oh, Lord, have mercy. It doesn't matter what the mess that has been made. It doesn't matter even the mess that is not even near you. You know when somebody jumps into mud, some of the mud spats and it comes over you. Glory be to God. It doesn't matter. If God can turn around the fortunes of Joseph, who had a criminal record, definitely there's got to be a turnaround. Come on, look at, turn to your neighbor and say, look at me. There's going to be a turnaround. Ain't nothing anybody can do about it. Oh, I wish I had a witness in the house of God. Turn to your neighbor and say, ain't nothing anybody can do about it. Oh, but you can stop, you may delay me, but you can't stop me getting there. Oh, come on, give the Lord a clap offering. So Jesus tells them to feed them because they have come too far. And this is where I'm going to end with this message. So he tells them to feed them. And the disciples are looking like, what on earth is he talking about now? We are in a desolate place. We're in a place where there's no shops. 7-Eleven is closed. Glory be to God. Shoppers drug mart don't open on Sundays. Glory be to God. There's nowhere to go right now. But then all of a sudden, one of them says, well, there's that little boy. I can imagine the way they were saying it. Even when the breakthrough comes, you're even cynical about it. Five loaves of bread and two fish for 5,000, we're talking men here, not even the ladies. Glory be to God, you will live long, my brother. It is true, hungry men. Over the holidays, we had our two boys come over, our grocery bill skyrocketed. Praise the living Jesus. Glory be to God. You know, five loaves and two fish. And there's 5,000. 5,000 men. They only said it that, uh, Jesus, well, so you can understand how dire this situation is. Even the bread we have cannot even feed me, let alone 5,000 men. But do you know what I want to tell you? The little that you have is all God needs. Oh, Lord, I miss it. You may think you have nothing. You may think I'm not gifted enough. You may think I don't have the connections, but the little that you have, oh Lord, is more than enough for God. All God wants is your little. All God wants is your little. How? Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, I want, God wants your little. Glory be to God. You know why? You see, the word El Shaddai makes more sense to me. It makes more sense to me. And when he says El Shaddai, it means many-breasted one. Now, yeah, there are no kids here. So let me, you know, when a mother is breastfeeding a child, 
And the child is very hungry and sucks out all the milk in one breast. The mother goes to the next breast and the baby sucks out all the milk. And the mother then gets frustrated and says, listen, you suck me dry. I don't have any more. Go away, kid. Glory be to God. But the El Shaddai actually means the many-breasted one. Means there's more milk. The more hunger you have, the more I'm ready to feed you. The more hungry you get, I have too many milk, too many breasts to give you milk. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. Now, oh Lord, have mercy. Oh, glory be to God. I'm trying to round up. Come on, praise God. Oh, and so, God now, Jesus now asks, is that all you have? Just bring it. He brings it and he does this. He looks up to heaven and blesses it. I want to talk about the word bless. You know, to bless in a general way means to be empowered to prosper. But I want to, I had to really go down to the, to the, to, to the very bare, uh, to, to, to go to the Greek, to the original to see it. You see, the word bless, glory be to God, in the Greek is the word, the word uh, pronounced eulegio. It's where we get the word eulogy from. It is two words. When you hear eulogy, ah, it means the EU part of it means to speak well or speak good. Uh, it's, it, uh, no, the EU part means good or well. The, 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 the legio part of it or lego part of it means to speak. It means to speak well of somebody. That's where we get the eulogy from. The word eulogy from means to speak well of somebody. Glory be to God. And so what we find here when we say it means to speak well of, uh, uh, of, of something or somebody. When the subject is God, his speaking and his action are the same thing. For God speaking and his acting are the same thing. When God is said to bless us or eulogize us, he speaks well of us. He acts for our good as he sees it. He acts for what we need the most, not what we desire. Therefore, he blesses by interfering. When we bless God, we speak well of him or praise him because he deserves it. So when we bless, when he blesses us, he speaks well of us. Oh, Lord, have mercy. He speaks well of us. So when God is blessing us, he's pronouncing goodness on us. Uh, we need to understand something about this word bless. The Bible says, ah, 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 ah. When he blesses us, he speaks well of us. He, he, the Bible says he sent his word. And he healed us and delivered us. In other words, when he sent his word, he spoke his word. He spoke well of us in his word. You know that the word comes from the heart. You see, out of the abundance of the heart, what does it? The mouth speaks. You need to understand inside God, the very nature of God is goodness. There is a well of goodness. It's a continuous well. So every time God speaks, he speaks goodness. That is the reason why when you read in the creation story of Adam and Eve, that is why the Bible says he breathed into them. You know, the Bible says every word of God is God breathe. It's, oh, oh Lord have mercy. When God speaks a word over your life, he does this. He breathes a life into you. Oh Lord, I wish I had a witness in the house of God. And when there is life in something, it has an ability to multiply. Oh, I wish I had a witness in the house of God. Because of the blessing of God on Adam and Eve, he said, and he blessed them. And it says, be fruitful and multiply. Mean, meaning that the anointing of little becoming plenty is upon your life. So you don't need plenty. If you are asking God, oh, give me connection. Give me this. Let me have that. You have missed the point. All you need to do is say, God, give me little. So that I can use the anointing that is the ability to perform of multiplication on my life. This is what Jesus was trying to tell them. Give me the little. You can't bless the gift. 
without thinking of the giver. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Because the gift has a source. So he blessed, he looked up to the heavens, meaning he looked at the source of this gift. Oh, I wish I had a witness in the house of God. Some of you are in a situation where you're thinking you have no hope. But there's just a little bit of you that thinks maybe God is more, that's enough. God just needs that little bit of hope and he will multiply it. He will pronounce that anointing upon you to make that little become more. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. Oh, so Jesus, oh Lord have mercy. I wish I had time. You know, Jesus took the bread, looked up to heaven because he understood every good and perfect gift. Oh Lord have mercy. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. Oh Lord, every good and perfect gift Every good and perfect gift. It may be small, but it's good. It may be small, but it's perfect because it comes from the King of Kings. Everything he created, he looked at it and he saw that it was what? Good. That's why he looked at Bennett. He looked at me and says, man, you're good. Glory be to God. It doesn't matter what somebody says about me. It doesn't matter what society says about me. I am good. Shout to your neighbor and say, I'm good. So if somebody rejects you, it doesn't mean you're not good. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Listen, the way I'm jumping up and down, that's how I was jumping up and down in my office. Glory be to God. The fact that he rejected you, oh Lord have mercy, is because you're too good to have any kind of man. Oh, the fact that one man rejected you, sister, is because God has a better man. Oh Lord, the man that he will give you that when you see the man, every time you see the man, you'll be hollering, thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. The man, when you see that woman, oh, glory be to God, you have a swag about you. It says, I my girl, that's, you know, I wish I had a witness in the house of God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. I lost my Jamaican brothers to translate that for you. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. So Jesus blesses the gift because he's El- he knows that the El Shaddai is more than enough. No matter how small the hope is, no matter how trivial it looks, glory be to God. No matter how stupid it looks, no matter how unreasonable it looks, it is good. It is perfect. Do you know when I say something is perfect, it means there's nothing wrong about it. It means there's no blemish. It's what the Bible says without spot or wrinkle. It is just good. God. And that is why people will look at you when God shows up and says, it is the Lord's doing. Because only God can do something that is good. Oh Lord, only God can do something that is perfect. I wish I had a witness in the house of God. I may be going through my wilderness right now. I may have gone through a few doors and it's shut on me. Just live a little. Just keep living. You're going to come back and say, come and see the God that this guy serves. You're going to be like the woman at the well and say, come see a man. Oh, I wish I had a witness in the house of God. Oh, I'm about to round up. I know I, kept, I keep on saying that. Glory be to God. Finally, glory be to God. Oh, where can I end this? I understand David clearly now because in Psalm 23 he says surely his goodness and mercy shall follow me I want you to turn to him and say surely it means of a certainty 
without a shadow of doubt. Even when I'm at, at death's door. Lord, even when I make my bed in hell. Even when it seems like my situation is stinking. Even when it looks like I'm in a Lazarus in the tomb. Glory be to God. Even then, of a certainty, his goodness and his mercy. Oh, do you understand when I say good? I mean good. That is evident. Glory be to God. Ah, glory be to God. Surely of a certainty because in God there's always goodness. You can search far and within. You can't even find any anything bad that is the reason why he cannot stand sin because he's too good to be around something that is less good and you know that same God you know that same God he's in here that same goodness is in here Christ in you the hope of glory. Christ in you. The hope of glory. Christ in you. The hope of glory. Christ in you. The hope of glory. It means when you wake up the next morning and the situation is still there. Christ in you is the hope to make you get through that day. The next day, when you feel that the situation is still there, Christ in you is the hope of glory. Let us rise up right now. Come on, give the Lord a clap offering. You know, if you want to know about this, begin to worship that Christ right now. Come on, begin to worship him. You have that hope. Glory be to God. You've come too far. From where you started from. You've come too far from where you started from. He's not about to let you go. Your payday is coming. Why don't you begin to worship him right now for that payday? Worship him knowing that your God's credit is good with you. Come on, begin to worship him. Begin to worship him knowing that God's credit is good with you. Come on, worship him. Give him praise. Give him praise. Uh, that's it. I just can't give up now. Come on. I've come, come too far from where I've started from. Nobody told me the road would be easy, but I don't believe. He brought me this far to leave me. Listen, I want us to worship God. Listen, it's only worship. You see, when you worship God, you're putting God in a place that nobody else can take. Glory be to God. When you worship God for your finances, you're saying He's a great provider, Jehovah Jireh. When you worship him for your healing, you are calling him uh, uh, the great healer, Jehovah Rapha, our healer. Glory be to God. I want us to spend a few seconds right now just worshiping him. Why don't you just worship your God? Why don't you worship him? Come on, worship him. Worship him. Worship him. I've come too far from where I've started from. Nobody told me. Nobody told me the road would be easy. But I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. I just can't give up now. I've come too far from where I've started from. Nobody told me. Nobody told me the road would be easy, and I don't 
believe he brought me this far to leave me. I'm going to need all the pastors because I'm feeling in the spirit. But there would be you need never some energy right now. I feel in my spirit that some of us, never said you're just about done right now. You just don't have any more energy to carry on. You're just like, I'm done. But can I tell you something? The fact that you said you're done means that God is still, is still ready to use that little bit of hope that you have. Glory be to God. So if you want, we're going to pray for you for God to energize you back again. For faith to arise on the inside of you. For faith to arise on the inside of you. That's you. Just come forward. We lay hands on you. I'm no magician. Glory be to God. But Bible says, if two shall agree as to touching anything, it shall be done of our Father in heaven. But I believe there is an anointing. Oh, glory be to God. <laughs> this man came running. Glory be to God. I just can't give up now. I've come too far from where I started from. me the road would be easy and I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me